Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10, the Draco Rex. The Draco Rex is a relatively new type of dinosaur, new to science, but extremely old to the world. What makes it so fascinating is that it looks an awful lot like a dragon from a fairy tale. It has a long tail, two powerful legs, a bony head covered in spikes, and a pointy jaw that looks like it's capable of spitting fire. But in fact, the Draco Rex is not a dragon at all. It belongs to a group of dinosaurs called Pachycephalosaurs, which translates roughly to bone-headed dinosaurs. And even though this creature looks like a savage predator, something that would stalk the prehistoric world feasting on anything smaller than it, that's not the case. It was actually a plant eater. It lived throughout Asia and North America during the late Cretaceous, from between roughly 95 to 66 million years ago. The Draco Rex is a fairly new specimen, the newest member of the Pachycephalosaurus family. Paleontologist Robert Bakker called it a remarkable milestone in the world of paleontology. He says the discovery of the Draco Rex proves that even when the dinosaurs were ending, right at the very end before the asteroid struck, they were still evolving. This particular breed of beasts combined primitive features with more evolved ones, such as unique knobs and spikes on its head for defense. Number 9. Black and Red Moon Plants NASA's Artemis program is the newest attempt to return American astronauts to the moon. This is a very real program that NASA is currently undertaking to establish a permanent colony on the lunar surface. It will be a base at first, then hopefully grow into something more sustainable. One of the key aspects of creating a stable population on the moon is the ability to grow life in lunar soil. In other words, NASA needs to figure out how to turn moon dust into usable soil for crops. And believe it or not, they are making some shocking progress. A new study was carried out by a team of horticulturalists from the University of Florida. They managed to get small soil samples which were brought back from the six Apollo moon landing missions. They got approximately 12 grams of soil to complete their experiment. And what they discovered is that plants can indeed be grown in lunar soil but they just don't look quite right. The researchers grew these same plants in small thimbles, which are normally used for growing cell cultures. Each thimble had a grab of soil, amounting to about a teaspoon. They used pure moon dirt and had a control of volcanic ash, which is the closest thing on Earth to lunar soil. Plants actually grew in the moon dirt and in the volcanic ash, but what the researchers discovered was that the plants that sprouted in the moon soil were smaller and had black and red discoloration. Scientifically, what this means is that the plants grew poorly. In the grand scheme of things, plants might be able to grow on the moon, but they're going to be sick looking with red and black coloring instead of green. Number 8. Lost World in a Sinkhole Cave explorers in the south of China have come across something shocking and unbelievable. In 2022, when pretty much every last corner of the world has been explored, they found an entirely lost kingdom of nature hiding deep underground. These explorers uncovered a never-before-seen sinkhole, an enormous pit in the ground going over 630 feet deep. It's basically a huge natural well, only one that's bursting with fantastic forms of life. There were new species of animals, new kinds of plants, and who knows what kind of ancient fossils hidden in the bedrock. It is made up of three caves and measures 5 million cubic meters, the equivalent of 2,000 Olympic swimming pools. Right now, we don't know if there are any new things inside of the sinkhole, but there definitely could be. There is a lush forest at the bottom, with mysterious plants that grow to be taller than some people, and trees over 130 feet high, growing from soil on the bottom. It literally felt to the explorers as if they were descending into some subterranean mirror world filled with dinosaurs and extinct beasts. At least, that's what they said. Because the discovery was just made, we don't have all the scientific information. We know it's in the Guangxi Shuang Autonomous Region, according to the Chinese government. This is an area famous for its dense forests, huge limestone formations, and serpentine cave systems. Chances are, if this sinkhole went undiscovered until just recently, there could be even more mysterious underground ecosystems that haven't been found, ones with new and exciting animals that have never been documented. Number 7. Tracks at White Sands Footprints from the Ice Age were found in White Sands National Park in New Mexico. 
footprints of giant ground sloths, several packs of dire wolves, ancient camels, and footprints from mammoths that stood 13 feet tall. But it's not the ancient beasts that have gotten scientists excited about the discovery. Alongside the tracks of these extinct creatures, researchers found human footprints as well. These footprints tell a fascinating story. By doing forensic analysis of the prints, researchers were able to discover one person who had made a journey and then came back the same day. They also found the footprints of a person who came through the area in a hurry, carrying a child with them. These prints crisscrossed with those of an enormous ground sloth, which the experts were able to determine had stopped, stood on its massive hind legs, and sniffed the air, probably smelling the scent of humans who had recently gone by. Humans first arrived in North America about 13,000 years ago, but more and more evidence like these footprints is pushing that date even further back to thousands of years earlier. Number 6. The Wow Signal A new development has been made over 40 years after the infamous Wow Signal was recorded. For a quick refresher, this signal was captured on the night of August 15, 1977. It was captured by the SETI program, which stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. On that night, a one-of-a-kind signal from deep in space was picked up by a radio telescope. Nothing like it has been captured since, and nobody has ever been able to identify it. It's become such a mystery that most people believe it was some random output from an alien vessel passing by many thousands of light years away. As it turns out, we might now know where the WOW signal came from. Astronomer Alberto Caballero began looking for stars similar to our own in the Sagittarius constellation. His theory is that if the signal really did come from intelligent life, they had probably been a byproduct of a star similar to ours. He identified an interstellar object with almost the exact temperature, diameter, and luminosity of our own home star, the Sun. It's about 1,800 light years away. As it turns out, we might now know where the WOW signal came from. While we haven't actually identified any potential aliens yet, or found the origin of the signal, we at least have a much better idea of where to look for them. Number 5. Ancient Egyptian Cobra A team of researchers at the Mansoura University Vertebrate Paleontology Center recently discovered the oldest fossil ever of an Egyptian cobra. The fossil dates back 37 million years during the Eocene Epoch. This was a period in history with some seriously impressive diversification of reptiles. Snakes, lizards, legless lizards, and all kind of scaly creatures were living on the planet, and that includes this incredibly ancient relative of the modern cobra. Even cooler is that it wasn't found in a faraway place, but right in its natural home of Egypt. The fossil was discovered in the Fayum Depression, meaning cobras have been a persistent part of Egypt for pretty much all of time. The Fayum Depression wasn't always a wasteland. It was once a rich and vibrant rainforest full of dinosaurs, mammals, and enormous serpents. Number 4. The Floating City In 2015, footage appeared online of a mysterious city floating in the clouds over another city in China. The video shocked the world because it really did look as though the city was just kind of hovering in the sky, like some ghost town with buildings rising up past the clouds. But this wasn't a fake video, it wasn't a secret hoax, and it wasn't an actual floating city. According to atmospheric scientist Peggy Lamone, it was just a mirage. A really exciting and convincing mirage, but an illusion nonetheless. It's actually called a superior mirage, or a Fata Morgana, meaning it was an upward projected mirage. Cold air near the ground with a warm layer of air above that must have created a temperature inversion. This is a reversal of what normally happens in the atmosphere. The result was that as light rays passed from one mass of air into the next, they bent in a highly unusual way that tricked our brains. And so, simply because of some hot and cold air, the city appeared to the human eye as if it was hundreds of feet higher than in reality, floating up in the atmosphere. This kind of thing isn't even that uncommon. When people describe seeing ships flying above the ocean, they're really just dealing with a Fata Morgana. All these rays of light fool our brains. We're presented with a hallucination in the real world, and suddenly there are floating cities and flying ships. Number 3. The Gold Star Standard Here's a fun fact for you. Our sun contains 67 different elements and roughly 2.5 trillion tons of gold. 
There's actually gold all over space, stuck inside stars and embedded in giant celestial rocks. But even more interesting is that 67 elements are inside our star. And now, for the first time in history, astronomers have finally found another star that contains almost the same number of elements. This one has 65, and it's in the neighborhood of the Milky Way in the Tucana constellation. It's being called the gold standard of stars by astronomers because it's allowing them a unique opportunity to study how some of the heaviest elements in the universe are created inside the raging bodies of stars. Its official name is HD 222925. It's unique in that it contains many elements, but not a lot of mass. It has extremely heavy elements like gold, but scientists don't believe that the gold and other heavy elements were created inside the star. They don't know where they came from or how such elements are formed out in the universe. What they think is that because of all the star's lighter elements, when it goes supernova, those elements will somehow end up producing heavy elements like gold, which will then end up being swallowed during the formation of a new star. Even stranger is that scientists don't believe the star originated in the Milky Way, but from a different part of the universe. That's why it's so unique. However, figuring out how a giant star migrated across space is yet another mystery scientists have yet to solve. Number 2. Giant Megalodon Tooth A remarkable treasure was found by a six-year-old boy from the small village of Bradwell in the United Kingdom. His name is Sammy Shelton. He was with his dad walking along Bodsey Beach in Suffolk when from out of nowhere he saw something pointy sticking out of the sand. He reached down and grabbed the mysterious object, then was pleasantly surprised to see that he had found a tooth. But this wasn't an ordinary tooth. It had once belonged to a gigantic megalodon, the biggest species of shark that ever lived. The oldest remains ever discovered of a megalodon go back about 20 million years, with the most recent being 3.6 million years old. That means that for roughly 17 million years, this enormous shark dominated every ocean on the planet. They were huge, powerful, and ruthless. Picture a great white shark almost as big as a blue whale. According to the Natural History Museum in London, an adult megalodon could grow to at least 60 feet long. These days, there is not much left of the extinct great predators, just their teeth. Since sharks are mostly made out of cartilage, the teeth are the only thing that doesn't disintegrate and fossilize easily. Plus, a shark produces and sheds thousands upon thousands of teeth throughout their lifetime. Considering the megalodon lived all over the world for 17 million years, there are probably billions of fossilized megalodon teeth lost in the oceans. Every now and then, someone like Sammy gets extraordinarily lucky and finds one washed up on the beach. Have you ever found a megalodon tooth or a shark tooth? Let me know in the comments below. Number 1. World War I Training Tunnels the Salisbury Plain in England is most famous for Stonehenge and a whole collection of other prehistoric sites. But recently, the Salisbury Plain yielded a much more recent archaeological treasure. Researchers discovered a mysterious network of tunnels dating back to the days of World War I. These passages were found underneath a military base lost for over a century. They were found to be filled with grenades, old graffiti, and tins of uneaten war rations. When World War I started in 1914, this part of Salisbury Plain was a training ground for the British Army. It was here where combat engineers were trained on how to properly build tunnels and trenches. These tunnels were to be used during real warfare so that soldiers could dig underneath enemy lines and plant bombs. Archaeologists discovered these practice tunnels while conducting salvage excavations. The Army is building a new housing unit, so a bunch of ground had to be dug up. Archaeologist Martin Brown says the project turned into the biggest single investigation of World War I training trenches in the world. It's unclear how they went unnoticed for so long, but it looks to be one of those things where the entrance was covered, dirt shifted, and the whole place was buried. But perhaps the coolest part is the graffiti, which is mostly the names of soldiers scratched into the walls for people to remember them years afterwards. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon for more amazing videos. Bye!